Welcome to this week's edition of the Weightlifting Platform, where the referees wear blue, but they make the athletes and coaches sometimes see red. The Weightlifting Platform is brought to you by the Pan American Weightlifting Federation. I'm your host, Richard Mason. On this week's show, Christian Omoa will talk to us about the most recent African Championships, transitioning from a successful junior into the senior ranks, and his weightlifting hopes. For our tip of the week, we'll hear from Ruslan Nuradinov talking about how to get stronger where we are the weakest. And for our regular feature, Good to Know, brothers have qualified for the Tokyo Olympic Games in weightlifting. But first, here are the headlines. The International Weightlifting Federation has issued what they call the absolute final qualification ranking list. It shows where each athlete fares in the weight category in their quest for a spot in Tokyo. There are a few surprises, and as much as this list is called absolute, there are other happenings that could still mean changes. First, the list itself. Starting with the lightest women, China's Jiwi Hu and India's Chanu Mirabai are atop the list, but also qualifying for, the, qualifying for the Games is Dika Tua. She was the first woman to take the platform at the Sydney Olympics, the first time that women competitors were allowed to lift at the Olympics, and she hasn't missed an Olympics since. In the 55 kilo category, Kuo of Chinese Taipei has significantly more Roby points than anyone else, including the Colombian athlete, in second place. In the women's 64s, Laura Dina Toma qualified in first position ahead of three athletes from the Pan American region, Colombia's Perez, Canada's Sharon, and Palacios of Ecuador. IWF Athlete Committee Chair Sarah Davis of Britain qualified in fifth spot. The top four qualifiers in the 76s are all from the Pan American region. By Jomez of Ecuador, Nai of the U.S., Solis of Colombia, and Fuentes of Mexico are strong qualifiers. But the two Asians right behind them, Kim of Republic of Korea and Fazulieva of Uzbekistan, will still give a fight. In the 87s, six of the top eight are from the Pan American region, with Wong of China and Spain's Valentin the exceptions. In the women's supers, China's Li has almost doubled the qualifying points of Robles of the United States of America. And this may be the session that draws the most attention outside the world of weightlifting, as Laurel Hubbard of New Zealand will be competing at her first Olympics. She's drawn attention at World Championships and Commonwealth Games previously as the first transgender athlete to perform. Now, over on the men's side, in the 61 kilo category, that pack is led by Li Fabin of China. Irwan of Indonesia and Vietnam's Tak are close behind, with Colombia's Francisco Mascara qualifying fourth. Next weight class up, Chen Li Jun of China qualified first in the 67s, and Hamjan Ergashev and Luis Mascara of Uzbekistan and Colombia, respectively, qualified with near identical numbers in second and third. In the 73s, China once again has the top qualifier. Xi Jiang is the favorite, with America's CJ Cummings uh, next behind. Andreev of Bulgaria, and we can also expect Venezuela's Mayora to perform well. Perennial medalist Liu of China topped the Roby points in the 81s. Rodriguez, Pizzolato, and Bonat filling out the other spots in the top half. The 96s have a relatively even field with a fairly tight grouping in the top of the qualifying list. Cutter's popular Elbak is followed by Rivas of Colombia, Sikansu of Belarus, Plesnoy of Georgia, and Santavia of Canada as solid medal contenders. The 109s has Simon Martri Rosian as the top qualifier. On a previous show, we told you he was in a fatal car accident. It appears that he will be cleared to compete. Raev of Uzbekistan, Russia's Naniev and Hashimi of Iran. In the men's supers, well, Lasha Talahadze has the most points, over 5,000. His next down was about 3,700 points. Ali Dawoodi of Iran and Fernando Reis of Brazil qualified second and third. The host country spots are up in the air, as are, as are the tripartite spots. And this could also be impacted by the latest news from Colombia. The International Testing Agency did not accept the meat tainted with steroids defense offered by three athletes. The ITA has sent the case for sanctions. Meanwhile, the Colombian Federation is launching an appeal. If the three cases are upheld, depending on the decision's timing, Colombia could lose three spots or a number of spots in Tokyo. Missing from the Tokyo list are two very prominent Chinese athletes, 
Deng Wei and Tian Tao. Deng appeared at the Asian Championships, weighed in, made herself available for drug testers, interviewed with us, but did not compete due to an injury. That was about two months back. Tao did lift at the Asian Championships, but will not lift in Tokyo as he is also hurt. The IOC is releasing numbers involving vaccines and Tokyo 2020. Nearly 8,300 athletes have at least one shot of their vaccine so far, or will have that one shot before heading to the games, and that is over 75%. Those are the headlines. Next, good to know. Did you know that the start list for weightlifting in Tokyo will have one last name, Andrian Tsitohena, on it? Not once, but twice. Eric Andrian Tsitohena is a 61 kilo lifter from Madagascar who's qualified with the continental spot in the 61 kilo category. He has a brother. His brother, Tojo Nirine, is a 67 kilo athlete who set the new African records in Nairobi just last month as he posted his best total and cinched a continental spot for Tokyo in the 67 kilo class. The brothers share a Facebook page. You can check it out. It's Le Frere Andrian C. Ohena on, uh, on uh, Facebook, and they document their journey as weightlifters, crossfitters, coaches, and personal trainers. And that is good to know. Now, time to talk. Christian Omoa is having a good week. He looked at the absolute ranking list for the Tokyo Olympics in the 96 kilo category, and he saw his name in bold letters in the African continental spot. We'd like to congratulate him and welcome to the weightlifting platform. Christian, welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael. Thank you. Now, we'll get to your Olympic accomplishment in a few moments, but let's start at the very beginning. Tell us, how did you first get involved in weightlifting? How did you first find yourself as uh, with a bar in your hand and weights on the end? Um, thank you. Um, before I started weightlifting, I was um, a stone cracker. Um, I, I'm, I'm a street hustler. So um, my father one day met um, the Ghana weightlifting coach, which is um, Majeti Fetri, our late um, coach. So... And then I used to go to gym and do the, um, this bodybuilding and stuff. So he introduced me to the coach and then he told him, um, he have a boy that is interested in lifting metals and stuff. So that's when my, my dad introduced me to the coach and then they brought me to the weight, the weight lifting field and then introduced me to weight lifting. Now, how old were you at that point? Um, I was 15 at that time. Okay. okay. Now, I was looking through your results. 2014 seems to have been an interesting year for you. You were young enough to compete in the African Youth Games and a Youth Olympic Games qualifier, but you're also good enough to fly to Scotland for the Commonwealth Games with Coach Kyle Pierce. Now, that was your first year on the international stage. Uh, isn't that a lot of, uh, of things happening for somebody who's uh, pretty new? How did you handle all that? Was that, was that an interesting experience? <laughs> Yeah, it was it was very shocking and then it was very interesting. But um, I was very determined because looking at my background, where I am from, so I decided to I mean push more effort into the sports. But that was the only way I can I mean make it in life because I had no education at then. So I decided to put all like everything I have into the game. So that's where um, I think that's that's how everything I mean brought up. That's how I made it to the um, Commonwealth Games in 2014. Now, it doesn't, didn't, your career hasn't slowed down from there. Uh, you were at Senior Worlds in 2015 in Houston and placed sixth at the African Games as well that year as an 85 kilo athlete. You're seeing a lot of places, you're going a lot of different uh, things. Oh, there's a picture of you from the, from, I believe that's Rio 2016. We'll get to that in a moment. Yes. Um, Somebody without necessarily, you said without much of an education, is, is this an interesting thing that it's kind of opened the world up to you? You're seeing places that you never thought you might see because of your ability to lift? 
Um, yes, you know, looking at my uh, my education background, I thought I wasn't going to, I mean, sit in even, um, even in a plane before, but God being so good, I found weightlifting, and then, um, yeah, here I am today, without education, but I can still fly and then compete internationally. Now, third year competing behind your country, beyond your country's borders, you did get to fly to Rio de Janeiro and compete at the Olympics. Tell me about that experience first on the platform. How, how did that go for you uh, in competing? Um, I was I was very um, happy. All the same, I was I was very frightened because um, Olympic was a very big platform. I haven't seen um, these tough guys before, so I was like. Whoa, I need to put in a, a, a hard job. So I was like, um, I don't think my, my, my weight even get what they are left in, but I still motivate myself that after this competition, I have to put in an, a, a good work and then come back and then do good. Now, what was it like outside the platform? Because this, uh, you know, you've got the athletes village, you've got the food, you've got the media, you've got the sounds and celebrations of Brazil. Did you enjoy that as well? Yes, I really enjoyed it. You know, like I, I really did because um, I don't I don't really get that stuff back here in Ghana. So when I saw that treatment, I was like, okay, if I could get this all the time, I, I think I'll be a, a world champion one day. So I really enjoy staying in Rio. Now, you also competed in another multi-sport games. You were at the Gold Coast in Australia. You placed sixth. That was in 2018. Were you satisfied with that result? Do you think that uh, this is uh, building towards bigger and better things? Yes, yes. I'm still building and. Commonwealth game is next year, so hopefully um, I come out with a, a, sorry with some um, a good performance. Cause me play a placing seat, and then my last time that I check um, the the ranking, I'm placing fourth right now. So I think next year something better will come out. Now I noticed when I was looking at your results that you did not go to Worlds in Thailand. Now. Thailand was an important event for many of the athletes in the international weightlifting world to try and get their points up for Tokyo. But you weren't there. Why did you not compete? Were you were you ill? Were you why were you not in Thailand? Um, I wasn't in Thailand. I wasn't sick. I mean, I was training very hard, but um, I think it was it was financial issue, so I couldn't make it to Thailand. That happens. Now, just. Recently, the African Championships were just held in Nairobi. It was a last chance qualifier for the Tokyo. The pictures I saw weren't flattering uh, of the platform and that kind of stuff. Uh, does that kind of thing, I don't know where, where your head is at, is that kind of thing of distraction for you? Or is it just uh, you were just happy to have one last chance to, to make a better number to go to Tokyo? I'm um, not at all. It didn't, I mean, distract me because I didn't go there to look at the platform. I just went there to, I mean, show my best because I was, I was really like into this Olympic thing because I have like some few points to make it to the Olympics. And then my coach Carl Pierce also did some calculation on that. So, I mean, I wasn't there purposely for how the environment or how the platform is. I just went there to make the Olympic mark. So, yes. Now, tell me, uh, you are going to Tokyo. You are going to this next Olympics in a little over a month's time. How did you find out for sure that you were going to Tokyo? And, and what was your reaction? Were you, were you obvious? I hope you were excited. Yes, I'm, I'm very excited. And um, before this uh, Nairobi Games, my, my coach, Coach Carl Pierce, did some calculation. And then he was like, if I'm able to do this total trust me christian you're gonna to go to this olympics so i was like coach i'm i'm very ready because i need to take this because um i had i had uh, my role model was kendrick ferris and he, uh, he has gone to three olympics so i was very happy when my coach brought out that um, um, um point that if i make this i'm gonna qualify for the olympics so I, I was like okay if i'm able to do this and then trust me i'm gonna follow this guy because i really love kendrick ferris and then I'm trying to do whatever he, he did before he stopped with left hand. Fantastic. Uh, now, I, I looked at uh, your birth date. You apparently turned 22 years of age while in Tokyo. Can you eat birthday cake and still make weight? 
Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I don't really have which problem but right now. Fantastic. Now, best of luck in Tokyo. We're going to get you to stick around for just a few moments as we do our fun segment uh, on the clock next. Thanks, Christian. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Thank you. Now, as I warned you, we're going to put you on a one-minute clock. Weightlifters should be used to this kind of pressure and ask you questions okay. to get to know you better. Some of them are weightlifting related, okay. some are not. Are you ready to go? We're going to do this in three, two, yeah. one. Favorite food that you grew up on? Favorite food? Um, fufu. Never had fufu. Best movie you've <laughs> ever seen? Um, Z Nation. Number of times you've bombed out at an international meet? Um, not none. I haven't bombed out. Exactly. I looked it up. It's zero. Do you play a <laughs> musical instrument? What? Come again, sorry. Do you, pl do you play a musical instrument? Music. Do you play anything? Do you, do you, have, uh, do you drum? Do you rap? Do you anything? Sing? No? No, no, I, I don't do any of them. I just weightlift. <laughs> okay. Uh, best, your favorite subject back from back when you were in school? Um, social studies. Okay. You competed at the Gold Coast. Can you do an Aussie accent? Um, come again. I don't know uh, no? what that is. Please. Okay. Yes. I was asking if you could do an Australian <laughs> accent after your time in the Gold Coast. No. <laughs> no, you don't want to try it. Okay. No, well, thank no. you very much for no. taking the time. We've run out of time. Uh, we very much appreciate it, Christian. Best of luck to you in Tokyo and thank beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, now, we're going to move on to our tip of the week. As humans, we always want to talk about our strengths, but we all have weaknesses. In this installment of our Tips of the Week, Ruslan Nuradinov tells us how to close the gap on the imbalance between our stronger side and the weaker. Hello, everyone from Weightlifting Platform by Pan America. My name is Ruslan Nuradinov, and I'm a member of the Uzbekistan Weightlifting Team. Uh, and I uh, go into the show you this week tips uh, how to get strange the weekly side for those who jerk classically uh, we know everybody who jerk the classically uh, have a weak side uh, for me it's uh, the left side my uh, left leg going to back and so uh, for stabilizing this uh, the weak side uh, have a one the good exercise and I uh, get to show you how can we do that. Uh, this exercise help for all our legs. Stabilizing the weak side. And this two exercise can help uh, to stabilize our gluteus and our hamstrings uh, for the better uh, for the better doing jerk. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of the Weightlifting Platform brought to you by the Pan American Weightlifting Federation. If you like what you see, bookmark us here on YouTube. Also, you could like the IWF on Facebook or tweet out to the IWF. It's IWFNET on Twitter. I'm Richard Mason. Good lifting. <laughs>